start discussing the working principles of different types of end effectors used in robots. Now, I am going to start with the working principle of a magnetic gripper. Now, this magnetic gripper, this is suitable for the magnetic material. For example, say uh, if I consider say steel, a component made of steel. So, this particular magnetic gripper is going to work, but it will not work for the, the stainless steel, because stainless steel is non magnetic. Now, here we can use both permanent magnet as well as the electromagnet. Now, if I use permanent magnet, the, 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 the mechanism or this particular your the figure will be as follows. So, for example, say this is nothing but the permanent magnet and this permanent magnet will be connected to the, the robotic end effector. Now, if I see this particular the magnetic gripper, if you use magnetic gripper, we have got a few advantages. For example, it can it can grip objects of various sizes and moreover the pick up time will be less. On the other hand, it has got some drawback like it has got some set of residual magnetism. Now, supposing that I am using a permanent magnet. Now, if I use this type of permanent magnet, so this is this is actually the permanent magnet which I am going to use and this will be connected to the, the wrist end of the, the manipulator. Now, this is the steel plate which I am going to grip. The moment I put this permanent magnet uh, very close to the steel plate, so the magnetic lines of forces are going to pass through this particular the steel plate and due to this. So, this steel plate will be gripped by the, the permanent magnet. Now, if I want to ungrip or if I want to remove this particular steel plate from this magnetic gripper. So, I will have to use one stripping mechanism and that is nothing but a steel pin. So, this particular steel pin can be used as your the stripping mechanism. The way it works is as follows. So, here on this particular permanent magnet, I have got one circular hole here, I have got another circular hole here and if I want to ungrip, so this particular steel pin will be inserted through these uh, two circular holes. The moment we put this particular steel pin, so some of the magnetic lines of forces will pass through this particular the steel pin and consequently the strength of the magnetic field passing through the steel plate will be weaker and due to this weakness or weaker uh, of this particular magnetic field and due to the self weight of the steel plate, the steel plate will be separated out from this particular the permanent magnet. Now, this is the way actually we can ungrip. So, this particular steel plate from the permanent magnet. Now, in place of permanent magnet, if I use the electromagnet, so and if I want to grip it, it is okay, but if I want to ungrip, so what I will have to do is, I will have to reverse the polarity. So, if I reverse the polarity of the electromagnet, so I am just going to ungrip this particular the steel plate. Now, this is the way actually one magnetic gripper works and its working principle is very simple and uh, this is very frequently used for the magnetic material, but this will not work for the the non magnetic material. The next is your the adhesive gripper. Now, this adhesive gripper is suitable only for the light object like uh, the small weight objects and here we use some set of adhesive material just to just to grip that particular object we take the help of adhesive material. Now, this is almost similar to the situation the way a frog uh, uh, press uh, its uh, the, the, the way one frog uh, catches its prey. So, on the tongue actually it puts some set of adhesive material and that particular tongue will be thrown towards the uh, that insect and the insect will be caught with the help of this particular the adhesive material. So, this particular adhesive gripper as I told is suitable only for the, 
the very light material. Now, then comes your uh, the universal gripper. Now, our hand is actually a true example of this particular the universal gripper, because with the help of our hand actually we can grip different type of object and this particular our gripper that is the hand is universal and it is robust and it is flex flexible and it can actually grip a number of objects of different shapes and size. And that is why this is a very sophisticated one and our gripper is known as the universal gripper. So, now I am just going to start with the working principle of the passive gripper. Now, this passive gripper is used uh, whenever there is no such sensor. I have already mentioned that by passive gripper we mean those grippers where we do not use any such sensor. Now, before I proceed with this the working principle of this particular gripper. Now, let us try to understand why do you go for this type of gripper. Now, let me take one very simple example. Now, supposing that I just want to uh, develop one printed circuit board say PCB or the printed circuit board and on the printed circuit board there are some small small circular holes. And what you will have to do is depending on the requirement of this particular electrical or the electronic circuits. So, what I will have to do I will have to insert some sort of small elements like register, capacitor and so on just to design and develop a particular the printed circuit board. Now, this particular task if I give it to the manipulator, if I give it to the robot and at the, the end effector actually we will have to put a special type of gripper which is nothing but the passive gripper if I want to insert some small small items like register capacitor into this particular the hole. Now, here the problem which are going to face is like it is bit difficult to insert a peg into a hole. Now, this particular problem in robotics is actually very popular. So, how to insert a particular peg into a hole. Now, here so this particular schematic view uh, it shows that I have got a steel plate and on the steel plate we have got one circular hole. Now, on this circular hole like this actually we will have to insert this particular the peg. Now, supposing that so this particular is the center line for this hole and I have got this particular peg which I will have to insert. Now, this peg is actually uh, gripped with the help of the gripper and now the robot is going to uh, just put this particular peg into the hole. Now, if it wants to put this particular peg into the hole. So, there is a possibility that this part of the peg is going to collide here and due to this. So, it will not be able to uh, insert. So, this particular peg into the hole and this is what is known as your the lateral error. So, the robot will not be able to insert this particular peg into the hole and it will be obstructed here. So, this is called the lateral error. Now, to remove this lateral error actually what we do is we put some chamfering that means your so I have I have got this type of plate and I put this particular chamfering sort of thing. So, here I am just going to put the chamfering. Now, if I could just put this particular the chamfering and try to insert this peg with the help of the robot. So, there is a possibility that this particular lateral error. So, that will be solved, but it is going to create another problem might be this particular peg is going to take the position something like this and it is going to create another problem another error and that is called the angular error. So, by inserting this particular chamfering there is a possibility we can solve this lateral error, but we are going to face another problem that is called your the angular error. So, how to solve both the errors so that I can insert. So, this particular peg into the hole. Now, to do that actually we take the help of uh, one passive gripper and which is very popularly known as remote center compliance and that is nothing but is your RCC in short that is known as RCC. Now, the construction wise it is very simple for example, say 
So, this part this is connected to the wrist end of the robot and here I have got one steel frame setup thing, I have got another frame here steel frame setup thing, I have got another steel uh, plate setup thing of small thickness and this particular plate and that particular plate are connected with the help of four such links like this. And here we have got two fingers, so this is finger 1, finger 2 and with the help of these two fingers we just try to grip this particular peg. So, this is actually nothing but the peg. So, this is the peg which I will have to insert into that particular the hole. Now, this is connected to the, the, the wrist end as I told. Now, so this particular peg will be brought very near to the hole and supposing that the hole could be here. So, might be the hole could be here and here actually what we do is. So, this particular peg will have some sort of oscillated movement like this and due to this particular oscillation and due to this error and trial. So, this peg will be inserted into this particular the hole with the help of this RCC which is nothing but a passive gripper. Now, this RCC will work provided we just put some chamfering at this particular plate otherwise it may not work and this angle of chamfering has to be less than 45 degree otherwise there could be some sort of angular error. And moreover, so this RCC can work in vertical direction, but it, it will not be working in the, the horizontal direction. But this particular gripper is very popular like just to solve how to insert small small electronic items into that particular the printed circuit board. So, this is the way actually uh, this particular the passive gripper works. So, this is all about uh, the, 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 the end effectors, the different types of end effectors which is generally used in robots. Now, here I just want to mention that depending on the requirement, depending on the task. So, we will have to design the special type of gripper, special type of end effector. So, the, the working principle of a few gripper, few end effector I discussed, these are actually very simple, very simple design. But depending on the complicated task, depending on the task, the nature of the task, we will have to design the most suitable gripper. And that is why we see the task and try to design the and develop the gripper. Now, I am just going to start with uh, the teaching methods like how to give instruction to a robot. Now, supposing that say I have got say one robot, say one serial manipulator and I just want to give the instruction that you start from a particular point say the tip of this particular the marker and you reach this particular point the tip of this particular the finger through a number of intermediate points. Now, how to give this type of command, how to give this type of instruction to this particular the robot. Now, here actually the purpose of teaching as I told to provide necessary instruction to the robot. Now, these teaching methods are broadly classified into two groups. We have got online methods and we have got offline methods. Now, by online methods we mean those methods where while giving instruction. So, we use this particular the robot. That means, we are going to teach a particular robot, but while giving instruction or while teaching. So, we will have to use that particular the robot. So, that particular method is known as the online method. On the other hand, if I do not use the, the robot while teaching, so that particular method is known as the offline method and here in offline method, we will have to take the help of some sort of programming language. Now, let me first concentrate on this particular the online methods. Now, these online methods are once again are classified into two subgroups. One is called the manual teaching, another is called the lead through teaching. Now, let me let me try to discuss the working principle of this particular the manual teaching first. Now, supposing that uh, I am just going to use one serial manipulator having say 6 degrees of freedom like Puma and I am just going to do some sort of drilling operation on a steel plate. So, what I left to do is supposing that so this is the plate and on this particular plate I want to uh, just 
uh, do some sort of you are drilling here at location 1. So, what I will have to do is, so this twisted drill bit has to be gripped by the gripper of this particular the manipulator and the center of this particular hole and the tip of this particular the, the, the twisted drill bit they should coincide. Now, this is in 3 D for example, it has got like x, y and z axis. So, this particular object is in 3 D. So, how to reach this particular point a 3 D point in 3 D space, space with the help of that particular manipulator having 6 degrees of freedom. Now, to reach this particular point in 3 D space with the help of your a manipulator having 6 degrees of freedom, there could be several combination of the theta values. For example, say there could be several combination of theta 1, theta 2 up to say theta 6 values with the help of which I can reach this particular point say point 1. And out of all the possible combination of the theta values, if I know at least one, so my purpose will be solved. Now, how to collect this particular the information? To collect the information, what I can do is, so I can take the help of manual teaching, which is suitable for point to point task, and this is nothing but a point to point task. So, there are several methods for this manual teaching. For example, say we can take the help of control handle or joystick. So, with the help of this control handle or joystick through some your error and trial. So, I the, the tip of this particular the twisted drill bit will be able to uh, reach the center of this particular hole. The moment it reaches the center of this particular hole, we store all the theta values with the help of optical encoder which are mounted at each of the, the robotic joints and we measure all such theta values. And once you have measured all such theta values corresponding to this particular hole which is to be drilled on this plate. So, what we do is, so we replace this plate by a second one and we make this particular drilled hole exactly at the same location. Then once it is done on the second plate, we go for the third plate and so on. So, for a large number of plates exactly at the same location. So, I can make this type of the drilled hole. Now, to collect this particular information of theta 1, theta 2 up to theta 6, we take the help of this control handle, which is nothing but a manual teaching. Now, then comes your the push buttons. Now, we have already discussed that for each of this particular robotic manipulator. So, there is a director or a controller. Now, on the body of the director or the controller, so, there will be a few push buttons and with the help of these push buttons actually we can control the movement of the tip of the manipulator either in Cartesian coordinate system like x, y and z or in joint space like in terms of theta 1, theta 2 up to theta 6. So, we can increase the value of theta 1, theta 2 up to theta 6, we can increase and decrease the numerical values for this x movement, y movement and z movement, then through some trial and error, the moment it reaches this particular point. So, what we do is, we store all such theta values with the help of optical encoder. So, this is how to use the push button. Now, next I am going to discuss how to use a teach pendant for the manual teaching. Now, this teach pendant is nothing but uh, one remote controller for this robot. So, just like the remote controller used in TV. So, the look wise almost similar, but slightly larger in size. Now, this teach pendant can be operated either in the Cartesian coordinate system or the world coordinate system that is in x, y and z. It can also be operated in the joint scheme that is in terms of theta 1, theta 2 up to theta 6 it can be operated in your the tool coordinate system and so on. So, we will have to select a particular uh, operating system or the coordinate system and then using this particular teach pendant. So, manually we can control the movement of the different joints. The moment it reaches the tip of this particular the cutting tool reaches the center of the hole. So, what we do is your we store all such theta values with the help of optical encoder. And the same set of theta values we use 
for a large number of plates. Now, this is the method of your the how to use the teach pendant to to solve to incorporate the manual teaching. Now, I am just going to discuss the principle of another online method that is called the lead through teaching. Now, for this lead through teaching uh, actually this is suitable for uh, some sort of your the continuous path task which I have already discussed and for this particular continuous path task the tool should be in touch with the job continuously. Now, let me let me take the same example which I took for this particular the continuous path task. Supposing that this is actually a profile which I will have to cut on one side of a steel plate. So, the way it has to be done is as follows actually we use some sort of your milling cutter. So, this type of milling cutter we use and so this milling cutter there should be a rotation and it should be able to trace this particular the complicated profile. Now, this is in 3D. Now, if I consider the 2D view supposing that x and y. So, this type of profile I will have to cut. How to cut this type of profile? To cut this type of profile actually what we do is we divide this profile into a large number of small small segments and the more the number of segments. So, the better will be the, the precision. Supposing that we are going to divide into say 1000 uh, uh, segments. Now, for each of this particular 1000 or, or 1001 points, okay, so we cannot find out so easily the sets of theta values like theta 1, theta 2 up to say theta 6. And moreover, so once you have got it somehow, so we will have to store this particular the theta values. So, it requires a huge amount of the memory, but the more difficult thing is actually how to determine like 1000 or 1001 sets of such theta values. Now, mathematically it becomes very difficult to determine these 1001 sets of theta values and that is why. So, we will have to use some other practical method like how to collect this particular the, the information. Now, one method could be your like your if this is the cutter. So, this particular cutter is gripped by the, the gripper or the end effector. Now, here so this particular cutting tool. So, it is going to trace this complicated profile. Now, we can try if this is the cutter. So, I can just grip it and try to trace this complicated profile which I am just going to uh, uh, cut. Now, if I want to trace this complicated profile uh, uh, manually it becomes very difficult because at each of the robotic joint there are some motors, there are some brakes, there could be chain drive, gear drive, belt drive and so on. So, it becomes very difficult like if I just grip it and try to move according to my choice. So, it becomes very difficult to move manually. Then how to trace? how to trace this particular complicated profile. And if I can trace this complicated profile which I am going to cut and while tracing at a regular interval. So, if I can store the theta values with the help of optical encoder. So, I will be able to collect the sets of all sets of theta values. And once you have collected those sets of theta values. So, we try to fit some smooth curve which I will be discussing after some time just to find out just to ensure the smooth variation for theta 1, theta 2 up to theta 6. And once you have got that smooth variation, now I can operate and I can I can I can run that particular the robot. But here the problem is that we will not be able to trace this complicated profile. Now, uh, actually one method has been suggested that uh, we are going to use one a uh, manipulator, a second manipulator that is called the robot simulator. Now, this robot simulator is actually not a simulation package. So, this is actually a physical robot and this particular robot is kinematically equivalent to the main robot which I am going to teach. And by kinematic equivalence we mean, so both the main robot and this particular robotic simulator are having the similar type of joints, similar type of links, 
but this robot simulator could be uh, in 1 is to 1 scale with the main robot or it could be scaled up version or scaled down version. Now, in this robotic robot simulator actually there is no such motor, there is no drive unit, but at each of the joint we have got the optical encoder. Now, if you have the optical encoder at each of the joint, but there is no such drive unit, there is no such gear, no brakes, nothing. Now, I can I can just grip this particular uh, the end effector or the this particular cutter which is connected to the end effector and I can trace the complicated profile which I am going to cut. And while tracing at regular interval with the help of optical encoder, I am just going to store this particular the theta values. Now, this is actually what is known as actually the lead through teaching. Now, this robot simulator is actually uh, the, the, the master robot and the main robot which I am going to control that is called actually your the slave robot. And this is in fact, the working principle of master and slave robot. Now, so this is actually the lead through teaching. So, both lead through teaching and manual teaching are coming under the umbrella of your the online uh, methods. Now, I am just going to concentrate on your the offline method and here in offline method actually we will have to use some sort of programming language. Now, if you see the offline method, uh, so we will have to use some programming language just like your computer program. Now, here actually we can use a language like val programming for the Puma series robot. So, this particular example I am just going to take for the Puma series robot using the well that is versatile assembly language or variable assembly language and this is suitable only for Puma that is programmable universal machine for assembly. Now, here in your uh, this val programming actually we take the help of a few commands from the basic language that is your beginners all purpose symbolic instruction code. Now, here we will see that the sum of the codes are exactly the same, but we add a few extra uh, the commands also in this particular the val. Now, before I just can write one program with the help of this val programming. Uh, so, I just want to uh, uh, define the task which I am going to uh, give it to the robot and that particular task is nothing but the peak and place type of operation. Now, let me discuss little bit this peak and place type of operation first, uh, then I will be discussing like how to uh, how to write down that particular your uh, the bell program. So, to solve this the, uh, the, the problem. Now, let us let us try to define the problem which I am going to solve. Supposing that I have got a, a table sort of thing. So, this type of table I have and on this particular table. So, I have got two bins say I have got say one bin or the bucket here. So, this is one bin and this is another bin, another bin or bucket here. So, this is bin 1 and this is bin 2 and here. So, this particular the table the top of the table. So, this is the top of the table say. Now, here actually what I do is I have got a manipulator say serial manipulator sort of thing. For example, say I have got a manipulator like this very simple say manipulator I am just going to consider here. Supposing that I have got a this type of manipulator and here we have got this particular your the gripper or the end effector. Now, this manipulator is having one coordinate system, one base coordinate system okay, like x, y and z coordinate system and this particular table is having another coordinate system here like x, y and z here. Okay. So, if I want to uh, give instruction to the robot that that you just go to the bin 1 
and collect a particular job and place it to the, the, the bin 2. So, what you will have to do is, so this particular coordinate system has to be known in terms of, so this particular the coordinate system or the base coordinate system of the, the robot. And supposing that, so on this particular bin, I have got an object, a 3D object and we know how to represent the position and orientation of this particular 3D object. So, here to represent the position and orientation, we need uh, actually 6 information, 3 for the position and 3 for the, the orientation. Now, let me take a very simple example. Supposing that this is the 3D object. Now, if I want to represent the its position and orientation, I need 3 information, 3 for the position and 3 for the rotation that is the orientation. So, I need 6 information. Supposing that the position and orientation of the object which is lying on this particular bin 1 is known and the position and orientation of this particular the bin that is the bin 2 that is also known and all such information I have stored at the top of this particular the program. So, here at the top of the program, so I will have to write down the position and orientation of the bin 1, position and orientation of the bin or the bucket 2 and the position and orientation of this particular the item the 3D object. Now, once I know all such things, now let us see how to how to write down. So, this particular the val commands. Now, we are going to discuss how to teach a robot practically. Now, here the robot which you are going to consider is the Puma that is programmable universal machine for assembly. Now, this Puma is nothing but a serial manipulator having 6 degrees of freedom. There are 6 joints, all 6 joints are rotary joints and out of 6 we have got 3 revolute joints and 3 twisting joints. Now, here so, this is actually the Puma. Now, this is a robot with fixed base. So, this is the fixed base. The first joint that is nothing but the twisting joint. The second joint is a revolute joint. The third joint is another revolute joint. The fourth joint is a twisting joint. The fifth joint is another revolute joint and here we have got one twisting joint. So, we have got 6 joint, each joint is having 1 degree of freedom. So, this serial manipulator is having uh, 6 degrees of freedom. Now, if I see the different components, so this is the, the body of the robot, this is the controller or the director of this particular the robot. Now, this is equipped with one display, but that display has become out of order. That is why so, this particular display is used as the display for the, the controller or the director of this particular the robot. As we have already discussed that the robot can be taught using either online or offline method. Now, out of these online methods we have got the manual teaching and the lead through teaching. Now, here I am just going to show like how to control or how to teach this particular robot using a manual teaching method that is with the help of one teach pendant. Now, this particular teach pendant is nothing but a remote controller for this particular robot. Now, with the help of this particular teach pendant, the robot can be controlled either in world coordinate system or the cart Cartesian coordinate system or we can control it in joint space like in terms of the theta space or in tool coordinate system. Now, this teach pendant is used for the manual teaching. Now, regarding this offline teaching method as I have already mentioned that we use some programming language. Now, for this particular Puma series robot, the programming language which you are using to teach this particular robot is VAL that is versatile assembly language or variable assembly language. Now, this versatile assembly language we can use to write down the program to solve some practical problems. Now, here I am just going to discuss two practical problems and to solve these two practical problems, we are going to write down the val commands and we are going to control this particular the manipulator. 
Now, let us first concentrate on the first task. Now, the task is now we will give command with the help of the valve programming like the first the robot will go to its home position. Then from the home position, so we will direct it to reach a particular point a predefined point say point A and after that. So, from point A it will once again go back to the, the home. Now, to solve this particular problem, so we are going to show you the, the valve programming first and then with the help of this valve programming, we are going to teach this particular the robot. Now, here actually this shows the valve commands like with the help of these valve commands actually what you can do is the home is already defined and we are going to define a particular point say either point 1, point 2 or point 3 or point 4 and from this particular the using this valve command we can give the command that you go to the home then from home you just go to the point A and once again you come back to the, the, the home. Now, we are going to execute this particular program to control the, the robot. The second task is related to the peak and place type of operation. So, at location 1 there is an object. Now, the task of the robot is to pick that particular object and it is going to carry it to another location and it will place it there and this is very popularly known as peak and place type of operation. Now, we are going to show you like how to use the valve programming so that the robot can perform so this particular the task. Now, this is the valve programming. So, what we have done it here? So, we have defined the different points. So, its coordinates of the different points we have already saved in the, the program and then we are going to just give the command like move to that particular point, move to that particular point, another point. So, this is the way actually we can write down. So, this particular the, the valve programming to solve the peak and place type of operation.